Okay, everybody. Hi, this is Ed Crow. I have uh, 12 o'clock sharp, so I'm going to get started. If you haven't been on, on my webinars before, we do record these. We put them on YouTube so you can watch all the recordings. There's like 180 of them or so up there. If you want to have nothing better to do, you can watch those. It's youtube.com forward slash at Crow Medicare. So after we do this webinar, uh, fairly shortly after, maybe an hour after, we'll put it up on YouTube so you can access the recording there. Um, if you have questions, send them in during the webinar. I'm not gonna, I'm not ignoring them, but I just won't answer them until the end. But send them in uh, because when we get to the end, if you're busy typing, I might think we're done and nobody has questions and end it. So just send them as we go, and I will answer them at the end for you. All right. So we're gonna today we're gonna talk about the SEP changes for DSNP plans. A um, lot to talk about with this. The uh, just to give you a general idea before we get started, the rules that were made are fairly simple. They're fairly straightforward. I'm not saying everybody will like them. Um, I guess it's a double-edged sword in a way. Uh, there's good and bad about it, which I'll talk about. Um, but what's gonna be hard is the classification of the SNP. Um, CMS, as you'll see, has created categories and classified the plans and the classification of the plan determines what kind of SEP you can use for the plan. So that, that's gonna be the hard part. We'll talk about that, the, the levels of integration, I'm supposed to call it. We'll talk about that, but we'll go over the rules first, fairly straightforward, and then we'll get into the classification, the level of in, integration that the plans are classified as. Um, so we'll talk about the changes, uh, changes to partial duals and LIS, the elimination of the quarterly SEP, yep, it's gone. Uh, the new SEPs they put in, there's a couple of them. Uh, DSNP levels of integration, uh, you'll think, why do I care? Well, it does matter uh, depending on the state you're in. Uh, and then, as I said, we'll put the recording on YouTube. So let's get started. Okay, so these changes apply to everybody, full duals, partial duals, Quimby's, uh, people who are not in Medicaid and LIS only, um, applies to everybody uh, to different uh, uh, kind of amounts. Um, so these changes will start effective for 1-1-2025 effective dates, so this AEP basically. So to start, the quarterly SEP for full dual, partial dual, and LAS is eliminated. It's gone. So the quarterly SEP that we're used to for somebody who has Medicaid or drug help or something like that, and they can change plans, that is that is no longer uh, as of for any business written for 1-1-2025 effective dates. There is a new monthly SEP, and that new monthly SEP is going to allow all levels of help, doesn't matter what you are, full dual, LAS, whatever. That new monthly SEP will allow all people with all levels of help to disenroll from any MAPD plan and go back. It's a one way only. Disenroll from an MAPD, go back to original Medicare and enroll in a standalone drug plan. That is it. So if you're in an MAPD, you've got a month and you got some level of help, doesn't matter what it is. You've got a monthly SEP every single month. You can disenroll from that MAPD plan, go back to original Medicare and a drug plan. There's a new monthly SEP as well, an additional one that's been added for all levels to change standalone drug plans. Yes, so people with any level of help, they can change. This is just to change standalone drug plans only. They can change standalone drug plans every single month. That part uh, I was looked at and thought to myself that that seems like it would give some people a headache. Anyhow, there's then all. finally a new monthly SEP for full benefit duels, so a full dual, Medicaid, full benefit duels to enroll into integrated and aligned DSNP plans, integrated SEP, they call it, the integration SEP. So with that SEP, you can take somebody who's full dual and you can move them into a plan um, that is considered integrated. The plan's got to meet the criteria to be considered integrated and aligned. So the plan's got to meet a certain criteria. It's got to be classified a certain way for you to be able to utilize the SEP to move somebody who maybe has nothing and move them into a, a dual plan or somebody who is already in a dual plan and move them to another dual plan every single month. But the plan's got to line up. They will only accept that enrollment if it's going into an aligned integrated plan. So let's do the scenarios on that. So Again, all levels can change back to original Medicare and a drug plan on a monthly basis. So it doesn't matter if they have any level of help, they can change monthly. All levels can change standalone drug plans on a monthly basis. Okay. 
if somebody's LIS only, they cannot change from one Advantage plan to another on a quarterly basis because the quarterly is gone. So forget about the quarterly. Same thing goes for partial duals. An LIS or a partial, they do not have a quarterly SCP any longer, okay? Um, and then if they're an LIS or a partial, they really are not going to be eligible to switch during the year from one Advantage plan to another. Now, a full dual, they can enroll or change from one integrated DSNP to another on a monthly basis. So in other words, your LISs, your partial duals, they're stuck. They won't be able to do anything other than go back to original Medicare and a drug plan or switch drug plans. You will not be able to move them from one Advantage plan to another during the year. Those days are over. A full dual, you'll be able to move if there's integrated DSNPs available. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. All right. So. What is this integration thing? Well, this is the classification that CMS made. They made three categories of integration for a dual plan. So the integration SEP to move a full dual can be used with the following DSNP plans that have been classified as such. These are the three levels. They gotta meet one of these levels of classification. A fully integrated dual eligible special needs plan, a FID as they call it. It can be a highly integrated dually eligible special needs plan, a HIDE plan or a DSNP that is an applicable integrated plan, AIP. What determines those levels? Just to, It's determined by the amount of integration and coordination the plan has with Medicaid. And those determinations are not just federal, it's based by state. So what makes this tricky is if a certain company has a plan that is considered fully integrated or a HIDE or an AIP in one state, it might not be any of those things in another state because the state determines criteria. To meet any of these three levels, you need to have an MCO, a Medicaid Managed Care Organization, sometimes called MMCO or MCO. And you gotta have that organization in the state to qualify for any of the three levels. So again, an example of that is, you're probably, most of you are aware, there are private insurance companies, a number of them, I won't mention names. They have Medicaid Managed Care Organizations. They they have for, they get capitation rates to manage Medicaid for people. It's a plan, basically. Um, and to have a, a SNP, a dual plan that meets this criteria, that company, there has to be a managed Medicaid, um, a Medicaid managed care organization, and that organization has to have a parent company offering a dual plan. So it's got to have integration, as they call it. So, you know, if one of the carriers out there has an MCO, then that carrier has a good chance of meeting one of these criteria. Now they might have an MCO in some states, they might not have them in others. So in some states, they might meet the criteria to get one of the three categorizations and in other states, they might not. Okay. The SEP is not available to enroll in. So that the SEP for full duals, if the plan meets one of those three criteria, they can enroll. It's not available to enroll in coordinate, coordination only DSNPs, that is not an AAP, sometimes called an integrated only or plan, a standard MAPD, MAPD or a SNP lookalike plan. So it's gotta be those three classifications to enroll. It's not, you can't enroll somebody into a regular DSNP, um, an MAPD or a DSNP lookalike. Now there's a couple elections here. What if people use both the monthly SEP and the integrated SEP. So they use the monthly one to disenroll from an Advantage plan, go back to original Medicare, and then they're a full dual. So they use the integrated SEP. Whatever one is last will win. You're gonna get scenarios like that, I'm sure. Okay, so to determine the level of DSNP integration, it's gonna be very important to know the level of the plan to see if you can move a full dual into that plan the carriers are gonna to have to clearly identify the level of a given DSNP plan. So, and just not to jump ahead on my slides a little bit here, but there are some states that have no plans, no DSNPs that meet that level of integration. Connecticut is one of them. To my knowledge, Connecticut doesn't have any DSNP plans that meet the criteria to be one of those three levels. In other words, full duels in Connecticut most likely will not be able to move during the year because there won't be anything that qualifies to move them into. All right, I'm gonna to jump topics for a minute. What's a dual lookalike plan? I mentioned that earlier. It's basically an Advantage plan with a high percentage of dual eligible enrollment. They have no contractual responsibility to coordinate care. 
They don't have a model of care. Um, they don't have the things that are needed to be considered an actual by CMS in the state to be actually considered a dual plan, but they act like one. And what CMS is gonna do is they're gonna start, a, and they already have, they're gonna start identifying Medicare Advantage plans that they consider lookalikes, meaning they don't make, meet the criteria to be a dual, but they're acting like they're a dual. And in 2024, if a plan has 80% dual enrollment or more, and they don't make, meet the criteria, they're gonna consider them a lookalike. In 2025, it's 70%, and then it goes down to 60%. So if plans got, in 2026, if a plan's got 60% duals, but they don't meet the criteria to be a dual plan, CMS is not gonna be looking to renew those contracts on those plans. There's a fair amount of them out there. All right, I mentioned aligned enrollment before. Uh, why and do we care about what it is? Well, we, we probably will need to care at some point. Um, when a Medicaid managed care organization, an MCO, has a relationship with a DSNP, and that's the example I gave earlier. So you've got a company that has a DSNP, and they've got a sub company they own that's operating as a me Medicaid managed care organization. They're considered affiliated with that DSNP then. So I've got a MCO, I'm doing business, my parent company offers a DSNP, those plans are then aligned because it's the same company basically that's managing Medicaid and offering a DSNP. So who cares? Well, in the future, enrollments in DSNP may be limited to aligned enrollments. So in the future, CMS is talking about saying you can only enroll somebody in a DSNP plan if it's aligned, meaning if it's with a company that in the given state has both an MCO and offers an Advantage plan. And that, no coincidence, right now those three criteria for classifications of a plan that CMS made, you've got to be aligned, you've got to have an MCO in order to meet that criteria. That's why in Connecticut, you'll see I'm not aware of any plans that will meet the criteria which will allow you to move a dual during the year with that new election period. And in the future, they said DSNP, and I think they're doing that right now, DSNP contracts may be limited to plan sponsors that also have an MCO in the plan service area. So maybe in 2026, 2027, you got a company that offers a DSNP, but they also don't own an MCO. They're probably not going to be able to have people enroll in that plan. But for this year, you don't worry about that. You worry about the, does the plan meet the classifications? All right, in summary, so partial dual and LIS members will only be able to change from original Medicare and a drug plan, or only be able to change to original Medicare and a drug plan or change, or change drug plans with the new SEPs on a monthly basis. Full duals can use that option as well, okay? But full duals have another option Full duals can change from one Advantage plan to another on a monthly basis if they are changing to an integrated or applicable integrated plan. And again, it's gonna be important to determine the status of the plan with the carrier. There are currently a lot of dual plans that are coordination only, and you'll hear that term used, or, or integrated only. So if a plan is coordination only, a dual plan is coordination only or integrated only, that plan is not eligible to use this new election for full duals. So many of the plans don't have an MC, and the reason is, one of the reasons is many of the plans don't have an MCO to allow them to meet that criteria. And again, I had mentioned, sorry, let me go back. I had mentioned states. Right now there's about, give or take 15 states. They have very few MCOs. And as a result, there's about 15 states that there will be very few plans available from a dual basis where you can switch a dual to a full dual to those. And like I said, in the state of Connecticut, for example, I'm not aware of one. I don't think there are any. Now, some states have more. Some states already have a lot of MCOs. States like California, Florida, Massachusetts, New York has a fair amount, Texas, Wisconsin. They will have plans that are eligible because they have a number of MCOs operating with parent companies that offer Advantage plans. But states like, I'll give you a quick rundown, Alabama, Alaska, Connecticut, Idaho, Maine, Montana, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Vermont, Wyoming, um, you can throw some more in there that have very, those states have hardly any. Some states have very few, like Colorado, Georgia, North Carolina, Rhode Island. Um, so in those states, you will see very few plans that meet the criteria. 
confusing to a degree, um, but really the big confusion is just knowing if the plan meets any of the three criteria so you can use it. Um, I'm sure the carriers will provide clarification on that. Um, so that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna check and see if we have any questions. And we do. Somebody said, assume OEP is not impacted for these folks. Correct, AEP, OEP, um, not impacted. In fact, in a state like Connecticut, in a state like Maine, um, given that very few, if any of the duels will meet the criteria, AEP and OEP is the only time you'll really be able to take a full duel or, or somebody with help and switch them from one plan to another. QMB is full benefit. No, it is not. It is partial um, benefit. So there's no longer an SEP to go from an MAPD to another MAPD. There is. There's AEP and OEP. But if you're a full dual, correct, the quarterly is gone. And if, the, if there is not a plan that meets the criteria for a full dual for a full integrated plan, if it doesn't meet the criteria, then correct, there will be nowhere to move those people. Is there a polite, let's see this question, is there a polite, is there a way to politely state at the onset of a person con, contacting us, how have these needs to bow out from assisting them and refer them to another agent? Well, I mean, sure, you don't have to take a client. Um, but I, you know, obviously you'd need to feel that situation out, um, because if that person isn't, maybe they're already in an advantage plan and they're not eligible for the dual election, maybe they don't have election or maybe they do, but you, you'd have to explore that. Can we get info where the integrated plans are available? Um, it's hard to find right now. Basically what I did prior to this webinar is I started calling carriers. Uh, I started with Connecticut and I called pretty much everybody and nobody's plan is. Now, what they're gonna say is, our plan's coordination only or integrated only. That doesn't that doesn't meet the criteria. So then they all clarified for me. I said, well, you mean your coordination only plan because full duels can't move to your plan then during lock-in and they all agreed, yes. So there's a difference in terminology here, but the end result is in Connecticut, the plans do not qualify for the criteria to be a plan that a dual can move to. Uh, example, what states? I think I read off some examples. Uh, I could give you a few more if you'd like. Maybe I did them very fast, I don't recall. Uh, let's see, so. Uh, okay, we got one other question that's a long one. I might answer that one offline for you, Chris. Um, Somebody said, seems like they are trying to put us out of business. Um, I think they'll still, once the carriers, it's definitely not making it easier. The whole point of this is what they wanna do is make sure that if the person enrolls in a DSNP that is fully coordinated with Medicaid. Um, I think the carriers will adjust. Carriers that don't have MCOs right now in given states, I think you'll see them get them pretty, pretty rapidly. Um, so for 2025 in certain states, I think you're, it's, you're gonna have a t some tough sledding with duels. Um, and I know that's, for people who write a lot of duels, that is tough. Um, I think you'll see them in 2026 adjust. Um, will Sunfire incorporate the three levels into the user interface that I'm aware of? I, I don't know yet. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, this was not brought up by either Sunfire or Connection with me. Uh, I will follow up with them, but I don't know the answer to that right now. Okay, reminder that changes to a new level or changes of qualification would still trigger SEP. Correct, right. So if you're newly eligible, if you're newly on Medicaid, that would trigger an SEP for you. Correct. Let's see if we have any other questions here. Um, does not look like we do. Uh, I'll take a, a minute here. Um, just rem rem reminder, uh, appreciate you attending. You can watch the videos on YouTube. We'll put it up there. So just go to youtube.com forward slash pro Medicare. Subscribe if you don't mind. Uh, when we put new videos up, then you'll be notified that they're up there. Um, and it looks like that's all we have for questions. Um, this is a big change. Uh, it's not being talked about a lot yet because I think carriers are trying to sort this out and figure it out. Um, but definitely going to be a big change, and especially in states like, you know, Connecticut, uh, Maine, 
um, Colorado, Georgia, North Carolina, you're going to see a lot of these plans are not do not meet the level of integration needed. Somebody said I'm supposed to say smash that subscribe button. Yes, please smash the subscribe button. I need more subscribers. Got to get the kids to quit picking on me because I have so few. Somebody said, I'm not sure I follow the question, the last question. How about DST like we have now in GA, in Georgia? Uh, not sure what you're saying. So if DST, I don't know off the top of my head, if, if they're a CMO, right, and their parent organization offers an Advantage plan, then there's a very good chance that Advantage plan will meet one of those three criteria and it could be used. Oh, DST is for disasters. Oh. A disaster, yeah, those elections aren't changing. Disaster elections aren't going to change. You can AEP, OEP, regular SEPs will still work. Um, it's just SEP for dual and help. That's what's being changed here. Somebody said SPAPs. Um, SPAPs will not, I mean, if you, you will not, if somebody's new to a SPAP, um, there's still, those questions, yes, thank you, yes, state pharmaceutical assistance programs. Um, yes, those elections, as I know right now, will still be eligible. So if somebody, example somebody gave is somebody's new to Epic, right, or if they have Epic. Um, but I don't, I think that is gonna be wrapped into the help category, but it hasn't yet, or I didn't see anything that says that it will be, but I don't think they're long for the world. Uh, Changes to eligibility, gains then loses, then gains count as election to SEP. As far as I know, yes. So they'd be, they, they had it, they lost it, then they got it again, they're new. So I would think that election would count, but it does not get into those details yet. Hopefully the carriers will provide a little more clarification there. Okay, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any other questions that you haven't asked yet, uh, please just follow up with us. Be happy to answer them for you. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.